So day 31 and 32 on, on this video, doing it uh, two videos, or I'm sorry, two days in one video. I normally do one day in one video, but I didn't get to record yesterday, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we did yesterday as well as we did today. Um, so yesterday, just going straight into it, uh, we did risotto from scratch, out of the box from scratch. We par cooked it and then finished it uh, at pickup. We did sort of a round table discussion. I don't know if I have, yeah, I have a picture of it here where we just put down a risotto um, and talk a little bit about it. Um, this risotto was made with chicken stock and it's also made with one part uh, cream and then, I'm sorry, two parts cream, one part man, not manchego. Uh, I'm forgetting the, I'm forgetting the cheese now. It was a sort of, it's like an Italian cheese. I'm, I'm forgetting, it's escaping me in front of, in front of the camera. So I'm forgetting, but there's, bottom line, there's some cream in here, um, lots of butter um, and some chicken stock and you're just sort of cooking it through and kind of, um, kind of mixing it around to make sure that nothing is overcooked and everything is cooked uh, evenly. Um, the one thing that uh, I, I did uh, get feedback on uh, was that I need more liquid on, on on the plating so more liquid to finish the doneness was good seasoning was good more more liquid on on the dish itself when finishing so if I just added another one two maybe two ounces of stock I would have it would have been done so um, yeah lesson learned there just serving it a little bit more wet um, than than usual obviously it's my first time making risotto um, we, we, we made it with some, some saffron and white wine, uh, which added this sort of yellow hue to it, which is really nice. So yeah, um, just having it more wet. I actually got to bring some risotto home to practice. So I'm looking forward to, to, to practicing on that. Um, yeah, like I said, we did a round table, talked a little bit about our dishes. We also did, um, bone marrow. This is with a partner. So, um, you know, just work together on this this um, acidic uh, lemon salad that would pair nicely with the fat of the bone marrow. Um, this acidic salad was, it was so delicious, uh, especially paired with the bone marrow. Um, it's, you really want that acidity because it's so fatty and so rich that it helps to sort of take that down and kind of cut everything through, uh, cut, cuts right through the fat. So it's really delicious. And uh, I actually got to take some bone marrow home, um, put it in the freezer. So I'm gonna prepare it later on um, for a special occasion, maybe, who knows. Um, but yeah, uh, this was fun. This was a, 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 um, a partner activity. I actually left the baguette in the toaster itself. So I actually overcooked the other side, but you really can't see it. The presentation side is what's showing. Um, so that was a, 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 a no-no for me and uh, sort of an embarrassing moment. Um, but yeah, never leave things on the salamander because it cooks quickly on that broil. So yeah. Um, moving on to the next day, this was the osabuco that we made. Uh, we also made a turnip puree which uh, came out really nicely. Um, this was, the turnip was blanched in boiling water and then, um, and then uh, uh, blended, uh, pureed in a Vitamix. Um, I really, really want a Vitamix. I really want a Vitamix, but I can't afford one. So I'm not, I, I can't, obviously can't get one, but if you can get one, definitely do because it, it, like, look at this beautiful puree. Um, the one thing here um, was that I threw away the bone. I don't, I like, I didn't realize that we needed the bone for plating. I wish I kept it on. It would have looked so much more beautiful too with the bone, but I just, I threw it out. Um, but you know what, those things happen. Um, I, obviously in a real restaurant, I'll know not to throw away the bone. If I ever work at a real restaurant, I'll know not to throw away a bone but I, I thought it was like a boneless sort of braise that you that you present. So I'm um, also working on some knife cuts. Definitely still a long way to go. As you guys know, I practice almost, if not every day. So uh, long way to go on these brunoise and this chiffonade. 
Uh, but yeah, just just sort of working through that. Um, he said the, the seasoning for the turnip was delicious. Also the puree consistency was really nice. The, he could have, um, could have done with more sauce. So a bit on the cheaper side with the sauce. So more sauce next time he should be really getting the layers of the turnip, the sauce and the meat or the protein um, in that layers of flavor. So um, next time more sauce, um, better knife cuts, but overall good seasoning on the puree and good seasoning on the, on the uh, osobuco. Again, this is the osobuco dish. Uh, this was uh, the seared steak. I actually reverse seared it. So I put it in the oven with a probe thermometer uh, set so it let me know when uh, to take it out at a certain temperature. I was look I took this out, put it in the oven raw, took it out at, two, uh, at 115. Um, so yeah, definitely um, it was just, you, you can't mess up. You really can't mess up with a probe thermo thermometer at low heat. You, you can't mess this up and it's it's beautiful browning. Um, this was the Blanche asparagus that we made. He did comment on the sauce. He wanted it to be a bit thicker and I agreed. Um, I, I, uh, I should have I uh, um, reduced it a little bit more, but yeah, I mean, next time definitely. But I, and, I, and you'll see for the next sauce that I present, I did thicken it up, but then he asked he, um, he would have wanted more acidity. So uh, lessons learned there. Um, even though, <coughs> excuse me, even though I heavily salted this, like there was no tomorrow, he still asked for more salt, which is fairly reasonable. I should have finished it a little bit with a little bit of salt too. Um, but overall, I'm really, really happy with that product. I think I have another picture of it here. Yeah, so this is your medium rare. Again, This you're looking for a medium rare with a nice crust on the outside. Really, really beautiful. Um, yeah. So that was sort of what you, what you, what we are looking for. Again, just needs, needs to work on the sauce um, and really not rush that. Um, but I, I felt like I wasn't rushing it. I just w wasn't sure what kind of consistency he was looking for. Um, so the last dish uh, was a hanger, was a hanger steak, ha hanging tender. And we served it with some knife, knife cut potatoes, uh, which was a palm, Persiliad, see here, served with a palm persiliad. Uh, I did a version of this, uh, uh, of steak frites, uh, and then cooked this down. So uh, this was my last dish, um, obviously. Um, so here, I mean, I, I, it was cooked nicely and cooked uh, at a medium rare. Just the thing is, the big, the big concern was the fries. Um, I, I just ran out of time and thought I didn't have any more time. So I just sort of pulled it out. If I just took my time with these, these would have been, you know, at the correct doneness. They're, they're wilting because they're not at the right doneness. And I'm just bummed that I didn't take that extra three minutes to just brown them and, and get them done. So um, he also would have wanted more on the persiliad. The sauce here, the sauce consistency is much better than this one, oh no, this one. See the difference between the two sauces? This is much thicker. That's what he's looking for. That really, this was already nappe consistency, but a level up on the uh, on the nappe consistency. He did say that this was good seasoning, but um, would have liked a little bit of acidity in there. So a red wine, a little like a splash of red wine vinegar in there, uh, would have made a huge difference in the dish. And that comment really blew my mind because I mean, I would have never thought to add red wine vinegar to my dish, but he was right. Like balancing that salt with a little bit of acidity would have been, yeah, it would have been amazing. So uh, yeah, definitely something to think about. Also a lesson learned um, in terms of adding um, acidity to certain sauces and dishes as a sort of balance of flavors. I, I really want to make a video later on about the flavor compass, where you imagine like on a compass, there's fat, there's acid, there's salt, there's there's uh, there's uh, sour, there's spice, and really balancing out those flavors. So um, overall, two, two really fun days. I would say today was um, a lot of fun. I am trying to get more sleep. 
but it's just, I'm just exhausted. I'm just exhausted between, between this and work and everything else. Um, I'm doing the best I can, but I'm having the time of my life. I'm learning a lot. I'm doing the thing that I love to do. And, um, and I, I can't ask for more, you know, and these are the failures you want to make. These, these are the lessons you want to, um, you want to, to learn, um, some of the things that we're doing. So it's been so much fun and I get to obviously take home a lot of good food. So, um, yeah, overall, I'm really, really happy with, um, how today went. Um, I thought, um, I thought, yeah, I just, I'm just, again, learning so, so much about, um, about, about food and I'm just enjoying it. I'm enjoying it even though it's been stressful, even though I'm stressed out almost every day because I want it to be perfect and I want to get it right and I want it to be up there in terms of being a good cook. Um, I know that takes time, but I am just um, having the time of my life I'm learning so much and I, I couldn't be more thankful that I did this for myself because I'm just absolutely thrilled. With that being said, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace guys, bye.